Hello and welcome to Church to You, the online service of the Church of England in Magull and Melling. My name's Reverend Janice Hill and it's my pleasure to welcome you today to our time together. Just one notice to mention and that is that Thursday, the 13th of May, is Ascension Day and we will be having a service in St Andrews. If you'd like to come to that service, you will of course need to book through St Andrews Parish Office. As well as the service on Ascension Day, we have a number of prayer activities because Ascension Day marks the beginning of Thy Kingdom Come, a period of 10 days from Ascension Day to Pentecost when we're invited to pray. So there are a number of prayer activities on our A Church Near You website, but also available on the bulletin as well. I hope you can join in that period of prayer from Ascension Day straight through to Pentecost Sunday. I think that's all I need to mention. Let's just have a moment's quiet before we begin our worship today. When we come together to worship, it's always good to clear the air, to just remember those things that we've done we wish we hadn't, those things we've said that we wish we hadn't, and those things that we wish we had done or said that we didn't. And so now we come together before God, remembering that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And now those words of forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you know, each week we have the special prayer, the collect. This week a lovely prayer. So let's pray. Risen Christ, by the lakeside you renew your call, to your disciples, help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So now I think we're going to have our first song. See you at the end. Bye. Today's reading is Acts 10 verses 44 to the end. The Gentiles receive the Holy Spirit. While Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who were listening to his message. The Jewish believers who had come to Joppa with Peter were amazed that God had poured out his gift of the Holy Spirit on the Gentiles also. For they had heard them speaking in strange tongues and praising God's greatness. Peter spoke up. These people have received the Holy Spirit just as we also did. Can anyone then stop them being baptised with water? So he ordered them to be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay with him for a few days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The reading is from John chapter 15, verses 1 to 17. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. 
These things I command you, that you love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. If you, like me, have ever asked yourself the question, how can I be a better Christian? How can I live a more fruitful life? Today's Gospel reading gives a clear answer from the lips of Jesus as he speaks of himself as the vine, his father as the gardener or vine dresser, and his followers as branches of that vine. Jesus is speaking to his disciples, men who've left their homes and livelihoods to follow him. Their life with Jesus has already brought about a lot of pruning as they've chosen to let go of old attitudes, behaviours and ambitions for the sake of following him. Ten times in these verses, Jesus repeats the word, abide. It's an old fashioned word. For me, it carries a sense of permanence, of dwelling for a long time, remaining. Ten times. That's an awful lot of repetition of that same word, abide, in just a few short sentences. Time to really prick up our ears and listen. Eugene Peterson, in the message, translates verse 4 as, Live in me, make your home in me, just as I do in you. There's a real sense of intimacy here, an invitation to draw close into Jesus' heart. If life and fruitfulness are what you want, then abiding in Jesus is the only option because a branch that isn't part of the vine will only wither up and die. Trying to live the Christian life in our own strength is not going to work. Having the humility to recognise the truth of Jesus' assertion, without me you can do nothing, is key to fullness of life. Jesus' life, through the power of the Holy Spirit, as we heard about in our reading from Acts, flows out to those who are joined to him, who have made their home in him, who abide in him. So what does abiding in Jesus look like in practical terms? We're invited to abide in the community that seeks to know and love and worship Jesus as Lord. There's no such thing as a solitary Christian. We can't go it alone. We are made to be together, to learn how to abide in Jesus together, how to love each other together. Abiding in Jesus is so much more than attending church. It goes much deeper. It's about engaging with God and his people and growing together to bring in the kingdom of God where we've been placed. Our life together feeds our individual lives, our individual private prayer and worship, reading and studying the Bible, being in touch, in tune with Jesus on a personal level, knowing him and being known by him, feed our contribution to the life of the church. An integral part of abiding in Jesus is also to experience the pruning knife in the skilled and loving hands of the gardener, God our Father, who identifies and roots out unhelpful attitudes, ambitions, behaviour, to enable the life of Jesus to flow through us, to produce good fruit. 
So what sort of fruit are we talking about? Answered prayer is mentioned twice in these verses. As we make our home in Jesus, as we read and digest his words given to us in the Bible, so our prayers come into line with what he wants for us, for others, for the world. So we can pray with confidence, knowing that our prayers are heard and that there will be an answer. As we abide in God's love, so the desire to do what he says, to obey him, will grow. Jesus' commandment couldn't be clearer. Couldn't be clearer. It's a command, not an option. Love one another as I have loved you. The command to love is given us by the one who's done everything that love could possibly do, even to the extent of dying for us. And he's shown us how to fulfil that command. We make our home in him. We pray for his help, his strength, his love to flow through us. Of course we'll fail, but we come back to him to confess our shortcomings and to ask for forgiveness and a fresh start. Because apart from him, we can do nothing. Abiding in Jesus is how we stand firm and strong. How we live each day as we face the joys and trials that life will inevitably bring. Joy, fruitfulness, fullness of life. These are what Jesus desires for his people. Joy, fruitfulness and fullness of life are what he longs for, for a needy world to know too. As we see such need around us, family members, friends, neighbours, colleagues, not to mention the situations we see on our TV screens daily, folk bruised and battered by life. Can we respond afresh to Jesus' command to love one another, secure in the knowledge that as we make our home in him, as we abide in him, he can bring about fruitfulness in our lives, fruit that will make a lasting difference for the good of those around us. Amen. Blessed are you, Father God. You are always with us and ready to hear our prayers. You have called us by our name and you wait for us to turn to you and you seek to fill us with your Spirit. We give thanks for all who have revealed your love to us through prayer and helped us know your presence. We give thanks to all who minister in your name. May we share in the ministry and outreach of your church to make your love known to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we bring before you all the troubles and sadness of our world and we pray for all who have lost their way or turned away from you and for those who are unaware of your presence or love. We especially bring before you all who feel that life is without purpose and is meaningless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for men, women and children throughout the world, caught up in conflict who are be or are being persecuted. We pray that the leaders will work to seek peaceful resolutions and we also pray for all who are working or volunteering their services in these areas to bring medical aid, food, water and shelter. And for all the men and women in the armed forces using their skills to protect others. We give thanks for all who seek to bring peace and unity to our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we give to you the people of India who are facing such tragedy because of this pandemic. We give thanks to the country sending them aid 
in the form of oxygen, ventilators and vaccines. Be among them in their fear, their sorrow and their grief, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, guide their government in their decision-making to help the people they serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we give thanks for all who love us, for our families and our friends. We ask for your blessing on our homes, and we also ask for your blessing on homes where there is little love or where there is violence or neglect. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we give thanks and praise for all teachers of faith, for all who have proclaimed your word and taught of your glory. And we give thanks especially for the Magull and Melling team ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who are helping us on the road out of the pandemic, our NHS workers, all our key workers, our scientists as they continue to research booster vaccines, our vaccinators, our volunteers. Father God, there are so many seen and unseen, but you know them all and we give thanks for their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all who are sick in body, mind or spirit and all who care for them. We give thanks for all who provide medical care, whether at home, hospital or hospice. And in a moment's quiet, we name before, any, before you anyone we know personally who is ill at this time. Give them courage, hope and peace and the knowledge you are present in their weakness, pain and suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them. Give to them the strong comfort, surround them with your love at this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, as we enter into a new week, make us a blessing today that through our words and in our actions, something of your love might be discerned in a receptive heart and a seed sown in your good time, which will be encouraged to grow. Bringing all these prayers before you, we say, Father God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, in the words that Jesus taught us, we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
hope you've enjoyed our time together today. I hope you've had a good sing. And now we come to our final prayer of blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. So now I invite you to go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Take care. Keep safe. God bless. Bye. Amen.